Welcome to Teachers Teaching You Teachers. It's the 28th of March and somebody's just arriving. Look at that. That looks like... Hi there. Hello. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> so that's one of the teachers who we were waiting for. Welcome. Let's get started here. I'm kind of excited they, to introduce you all to uh, um, three teachers um, from a study group that is meeting once a month um, to talk about getting kids involved with youth voices and lots of other things. Uh, Monica, you'll be glad to know that we did detox um, last Saturday with everybody. So you can go on and see all these teachers' detoxes. Um, and then we thought about renaming that so we can talk about that. Um, to be you. <laughs> Um, so here, well, yeah, well, that's a way to jump in. Anyway, <laughs> Monica is here to, to kind of keep us going here, and Chris Sloan is here. Jim Nordlinger is one of the people in the study group. Amal Abasan, did I say that right? Say your name, please. Abel Hassan. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't say it okay. anywhere near right. <laughs> Thank you. Is here as well. No introduce themselves in their schools. And Carla Cherry is here. Carla is on a telephone. So you won't get to see her, but uh, let's um, jump in, see what your questions are, and see what's you know what possibilities there are for us connecting with each other. A couple other people might be joining us. We'll see as we go. Why don't we go a little deeper with introductions? And Carla, do you want to introduce yourself okay. first? Go ahead. Okay. Well, my name is Carla Cherry, and as Paul said. I teach at Innovation Diploma Plus High School, which is located on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. It's a transfer high school. I've been there for three years since the beginning, um, I mean, since our school opened. And um, I'm really excited to be part of um, Youth Voices. Great. Jim, you popped up, so introduce yourself. Okay, uh, I'm Jim Nordlinger. I teach at the Bronx High School for the Visual Arts. I've been there for five years, but I've been teaching for much longer. I'm an English teacher. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um, I, teaching was not my first profession, but um, I'm obviously have been strong enough to weather the whole thing for a while. And I'm all welcome. Um, my name is Amal. I've been teaching for six years. I teach at the Green Dot Charter School in the Bronx. It's, um, well, it's a charter school. I teach 10th grade writing, and um, it's nice that I teach. One of the reasons it's worked out really well, and Paul and I talked about this last week, is that I teach a writing class that's supplemental to my kids' regular English class. So mm. I kind of have a great gig with that right now. <laughs> That's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I would think Youth Voices helps a lot with the that. I would think that would be a wonderful way to go. I yeah, it's worked out really well that they have, you know, that all of the like regions focus and other things that come with like state testing and stuff can be focused in their other class, and we focus really just on writing in my class. And culminating in Youth Voices this year has been just amazing. Cool. Yeah, we'll hear more. You know what? I'd love to go around and hear from the three of you again, and say something about yourself to that's not about teaching, just so we can know you a little better. <laughs> Is that a weird question? No, not at all. Yeah. Go ahead, Carla. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Outside of teaching, I write poetry. I love to read and travel and. Um, I'm a Knicks fan. Um, cool. Like to cook sometimes. So well, that's about it. So you'll have to mix it up. There's some uh, Lynn Sanity hate haters uh, in Salt Lake City. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that my students. There's been some actually very, I think respectful, positive kind of back and forth. I, I shouldn't say haters like that. Um, mm -hmm. But that's, no, that's been okay. good, actually. Yeah. And Jim, tell us, uh, you have a videographer, video background, is that? I, 
I do. Can... I do. Um, I, I I worked for the Muppets for seven years before I became a teacher. And uh, oh, the Muppets. Yeah. The Muppets. Uh, the Muppets for seven. <laughs> yes, and I uh, I got. I had never. Um, I'd also worked for a company that made uh, PS, you know, uh, public service announcements, radio and television spots before I got that job. And I had never had any tra you know, actual training doing filmmaking, but I got a lot very quickly. And uh, video was becoming more and more. Uh, by the time I finished them up, its digital stuff was happening. You know, digital editing, and I got trained as a digital editor. So I got a lot of. Um, Avid and all this stuff, and I uh, left Muppets. To, I had never finished college, so I went back to school, and uh, you know, because I really wanted to read more, I guess, or something. And my wife let me go back to school, and uh, I then started making my. I've done. Uh, certain, I used to do many what are these fake documentaries for people, and you know. For record companies and stuff, and then I did a real documentary this last two years ago about homeless students. It was the a 53-minute documentary? Um, oh wow! Uh, that was used. It's used in several places now. You know, in different places around. That was very amazingly satisfying. As a teaching experience, also because there were the uh, four of the students we followed. I don't think I've ever gotten closer to any student. I've gotten. You know, I've had lots of wonderful students, but. Uh, I got very close with the four people who were the main subjects of the documentary, so, um, who were, and that was enormously rewarding. For me. Um, can we see it? Um, you can somehow. <laughs> I, I guess we could see it somehow. Yes, I, I don't know how. Online someplace? It's not online. It's not uploaded anywhere because it's used by certain groups, and I we don't uh, they don't you know we don't want to upload it. They they're trying to use it as a special kind of very personal thing they do for presentations and stuff. I'd love to see. Oh, okay. But we could yeah, see. Yeah, I would too. Okay. You How can you imagine we could see it? <laughs> I do. No, I'm kidding. Okay, yes. <laughs> so, Jim, how could we see it? Um, I guess we'd have to have a little showing. I could, you know, like, we, I could, uh, we could somehow show it. I don't, they don't, the people who yeah, I got, it. Yeah. They don't want it uploaded anywhere uh -huh. right now. Okay, cool. But Come I'd be on. happy to do a showing if you want to do a showing. Cool. It's called um, okay. who? It's called who is homeless in our classrooms? Because of how many okay. kids are in our class, you know, you, the people don't even realize the thousands of students who are homeless are right in front of everybody. Right. But I digital editing is really fun. Although I do less and less of it now, but I used to do you know tons of it. It's uh, very interesting. So it's did you so do that? Documentary with students or with student I I did a I it was with student subjects I I did all the the video and editing stuff because um I didn't I wasn't trying to experiment I real they really wanted had a very particular thing they were trying to tell so the I I did all the but the student work you know the student on camera talent were you know they were really themselves and very very much drove the story um, I just did the shooting and editing. That's really cool. Yeah. Maybe somebody else joining us. Like, oh, Valerie is joining us. Cool. Um, Amal, a little more about you. <laughs> um, I have nothing nearly that exciting. Um, uh -huh. I started teaching right out of college. Mm -hmm. um, I went to school in Virginia. I'm originally from California. I like to ride bikes. I like to run. You ran I, New York City Marathon, right? I did. Come on. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's, I don't know, that's, I'm, I'm I like doing, uh, like, graphic design things, but that's it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. That's I teach, <laughs> I teach most of the time, so <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to think about it. Right. Say a little more about your school. It's a charter school, but it's a union charter school. Can you kind of yeah, describe it's been, that a little bit? Um, it's a series of unique situations for me. Um, it is a unionized charter school. This is its fourth year, so this year we graduate our first class. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, Yeah, it is unionized, and it was kind of, I think, partially an experiment with 
the union and the Department of Education and the Charter Universe. Um, and so the Green Dot system was started in California, and they did. Um, they have a few schools in Los Angeles, in the Los Angeles area, and um, this is the only New York school. And I don't know if there's. Um, I don't know if there's a plan to expand that. I think there is, but to add more New York schools so that we're not the only satellite, or to have schools in other parts of the country as well. But it's a very small school. We have fewer than 400 students for mm -hmm. all four grades. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Fred, are you there? I'm, I'm <laughs> just trying to get established. <laughs> I think it's coming in. Yep, we hear you. Welcome. Can you hear me? We can. We're just yeah. getting to know each other, but yeah. you're going to have to catch up on that later, <laughs> which is fine. It's cool. So, Youth Voices, uh, who wants to jump Hi, in everybody. with a question or an issue or, you know, j even a description of what it's been like well, for Well, I was you. listening in the Hangout. I heard the intros. Oh, you did? Okay, great, Fred. Okay, welcome. Who wants to jump in with a question or a description of your work so far with Youth Voices? Well, um, I had had a question that I had wanted to ask about um, rubrics. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering um, how everyone designed their rubrics that they're using for their student work on Youth Voices, if they are using rubrics at all. Um. Complicated. Uh, it's a complicated question. Let's. Um, we'll get to that. Um, there are lots of things that happen on Youth Voices, so it would like. Well, I'm all, do you want to talk about what you've thought about that? You've thought the most about that, I think. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a question that I've had also. In that, um, the class I teach does like kind of specific things, so I feel like I have to grade them on more specific things, and um, we're building up to a research paper, which I've actually never taught before, but the steps leading up to that, I mean, I guess, Carl, I don't know if you're asking, like, how do you grade this a certain way? Is that is that kind of your question? Yeah, I, I was just um, trying to figure out if I sh should do a rubric, or if I should just allow my students to just, you know, be able to participate without um, the pressure of being graded. But I, I did want to honor their work in their grade, if that makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I do two things, and I don't know if it's working, because it's taking me a lot more time than I than I, <laughs> I think I totally dug myself a hole. But this is, this is what experiments do. So I have, I, I borrowed Paul's idea of the sticker on the wall that shows um, every student, like how many posts you've written and how many comments you've written. And so the comments okay. are small stickers and the posts are big stickers. And then I assign okay. a certain number each, you know, week or two weeks or whatever sensible time chunk there is. So like, for example, okay. this week they have to write two comments. Last week they had like, you know, a week and a half and they did three comments and a post and, um, you know, they did an inquiry post. So they've had to kind of meet my, my assignments that I've set. And then I also, for the comments, I haven't done this yet for the posts. Um, for the comments, I have a, like, a very small rubric that measures things like, did you meet the right length and do the right thing you were supposed to do? Because otherwise, they'll just be like, thanks, LOL, you know, and that'll be kind of the end. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, did you, you know, uh, did it reflect that you read the person's post and you... Gosh, I wish I brought it with me. Did you, like, read the person's post and, you know, comment appropriately, one, two, three points, and um, the last one, like, language mechanics and usage, which is, like, the thing we've been learning this whole time. So, did you proofread this is, is the third part for, for me. And so, I don't know if those are, like, sensible to the needs of what you've been doing, but that's, um, it kind of lines up with how my class has been so far. And again, this right. is the first time I've done this, and the first time I've taught this class. So, so it's all like happy experiment world right now, and and I'm I'm comfortable with that. But I don't know that I, I don't know that it's okay for me. To, this is why it works. Yeah, mm, that's cool. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. All right. Well, thank you, Amal. 
and we're way into details already if um but that's okay you know you know i no no i i said it's okay i I mean but um i i I like the big question of you know why are we grading this stuff at all and and i guess carla Mm -hmm. you you suggested that it's about recognizing kids work in some way yeah well yeah that's what it is for me i mean I really don't want to grade this. I, I really want the students to have the experience of sharing their writing with other people and just, you know, feeling free to express themselves. I didn't really want to grade it, but knowing some of my students, they'll say, well, do, do I, am I getting a grade for this? Like, is this going to count? Does it matter? And so, you know, that's, that's been my dilemma. And Fred and Monica, if I could identify, you guys are sort of on the most outside of all of this. So please ask us questions for clarity, imagining somebody might be listening to this, wondering, what are these people talking about? Um, and challenge us, well, you know, moderate for us. That question that just came <laughs> up you. from yeah. the student's point of view, does this matter, is really goes to the heart of what I've just been focusing on the last week. I just did a presentation on my thesis about who gets to tell the computer what to do Mm -hmm. at a computer using educators conference. And one of the things I discovered as I was researching for it was Angela Meyer's You Matter project, which is essentially just trying to take, put the whole um, education quote unquote reform. brouhaha into another context and turn it around to making sure bottom line number one task is to for all of us to make sure we're telling our students they matter that's Mm -hmm. the number one task and then the other aspect that relates to that is how do you create an accountability system that is not test driven but that's reflecting personal accountability for demonstrating that you are in fact learning and having a, a, for example, a lifelong e-portfolio that you begin in second grade and that, that you maintain, you curate your own accountability um, portfolio digitally that's independent of school, it's yours, and it follows you throughout your life, not just in school. Right. But are there any and examples we're, we're of that? We're all essentially or? doing that on Facebook already. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, can I jump in here? Please, Chris. We had a request from the chat room uh, that when you're not uh, talking, especially if you're doing dishes in the background, uh, you could mute your microphone. Uh, that came from Peggy. Um, but, you know, about the question, you know, how to deal with all this stuff, um, you know, I teach uh, traditional classroom, like... Uh, so if somebody has live stream off, don't turn that on. Or if you have it on, don't turn it on. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Just listen here. Go for it, Chris. Yeah. Um so, you know, it's the kids come in and they sit in desks, and uh, there are anywhere from 19 to 27 of them. Um, and, and so, you know, it's an AP class. Uh, I also teach photography and um, media as well. Um, but for my English class, you know, we do a lot of the, the kind of stuff that I did when I grew up, which was uh, writing on paper still. And... Um, you know, so how do I make something like Youth Voices fit into the stuff where, you know, they have to pass this AP test and all that? Um, baseline kinds of things that I want them to do each time is, you know, they post each week and then um, they should also, they make comments as well. And um, in their posts, what I tell them to do is that um, they should primarily write about the stuff that they're reading, that they're curious about. And so the the posts tend to be kind of really by default almost research because, you know, it's kind of based on their inquiry and what they're reading. 
So um, then I also say, well, you need to link to your source. So take me to this place that you've been reading so that I, as a reader and, and everybody else, can see what it is you're referencing. Uh, and then I think that also helps them be a little bit more, um, you know, specific about the kinds of stuff they're writing. And then um, I tell them, you know, to post something that's pretty clean uh, in, in the sense that, you know, it should be reader friendly. Um, and so there shouldn't be so many typos that I trip up reading it, reading through it. And, you know, for some students that's kind of a challenge and they have to, they draft in their docs first and then kind of go through some things and then post. Um, but generally I think they kind of want to do that too because the more struggling writers um, in other classes that I teach, um, you know, they don't want to have a lot of um, obvious errors. They're kind of sensitive to that. And so they kind of clean things up themselves. And so by clean, I don't mean, you know, appropriateness, although, you know, they're pretty appropriate because they're um, writing about their inquiries, and their inquiries are really fascinating things. So as far as that goes, you know, like it should be kind of a coherent piece and it should link out to this uh, thing that they're talking about um, and um, yeah that's pretty much what I do and then I give them full credit for that if they do that on time each week and then if it looks like they're falling short because after a while I know them pretty well if it looks like they just um, kind of just did a half effort then you know they don't get full credit so my rationale is I want them to be fluent and so um, there's all kinds of writing we do, and this is one kind of writing. And uh, if they write every week and they write something coherent and something that's based on the things they're interested in and, and you know, um, reading about, then I think their writing improves anyway. So. Mm -hmm. And Paul, Valerie. by the way, we, we have you Valerie, too. Let's not yeah, thank you. I was going to ask. Visitor. Valerie. Hi. Do you want to introduce yourself to us again? We know you are a little bit, but it's been a while since you've been here. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, Valerie Burton. I teach in New Orleans. I have a freshman English class, and we have been away from Youth Voices for a while now. Sorry. No, you know, Valerie, when, when you emailed me here at the last minute and said you were able to join us, I was really happy because one of the things that Margaret Simon, who also teaches but in elementary school down near New Orleans, um, said she couldn't make it tonight. But one of the things she asked is if we could think about somehow celebrating poetry. Um, and that's one of the things that you've done in the past on Youth Voices. Your, your students published a lot of poetry on Youth Voices. And then my students looked at it and said, could we write poetry too? And I said, I guess, sure. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, you know, we could play with April and being Poetry Month in some way. Do you have yeah, any my, plans yet? Yep. Yeah. I'd be real interested in that. Um, I was happy that we had an opportunity last time to share. That was cool. And mm -hmm. the kids who did share and got comments... They were really psyched about the whole collaborative experience. But, you know, my problem is stealing away the laptops from the school. So I get really frustrated when all these other teachers sign them out and then don't use them. Because it's like my kids, my kids could definitely be using them, you know. But I plan to get us back on. Um, all of my kids have ePortfolios on Weebly. Mm -hmm. And what we'll probably do is start sharing the stuff that they've published on their ePortfolio on Youth Voices. So we'll be doing some cross-posting like that. Mm -hmm. But I am eager to get back. I've missed y'all. Mm -hmm. Valerie, it would help us think about what Youth Voices is. If you could describe why they would publish on Youth Voices and not just have their stuff on the Weebly portfolios? Um, youth Voices gives them an audience and that's why I fell in love with it several years ago before I even put my kids on it. The fact that the kids had a viable 
platform to be able to publish to. Um, I think it's Chris's class. Do y'all do the, the video check-ins? Because I That's love, fun. yeah, I love those only because it gives them an opportunity to do two minutes of check-in. Um, whether somebody other than the teacher reads it or not, a lot of my kids have looked at them. They haven't commented because we're, we're limited on time, but they have checked out those little check-ins and I think that that's an important part of um, I don't know the the 21st the 22nd the 23rd century you can share your work you can share your ideas you can actually have a, a viable audience you know um, and I just really think Chris I want to start doing something like that because I thought that was the coolest thing and we're all in love with the girl with the nose ring <laughs> and I haven't been back there in a while but I, I love her to death because she's herself. It's like, I don't really want to do this, but I kind of have to. But this is what's going on in my life. And you can like it or you can, you know, and that's, that's my kids. That's them. Those are, that's, t that's a teenager. You know, and I'm going to have to make sure my kids do a better job of responding. So let your kids know they have actually been checking them out. Cool. Okay, we just haven't had a chance to comment a lot on it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. No, so, no, that, thank you. That's helpful. Um, I think those are my students, by the way, and I think okay. you're referring to Stephanie, and, and I love Stephanie, too. The, um, the, but sorry, the, Chris Paul, sorry. It doesn't matter. Um, but it brings up an interesting question that, or gets at what, why we do youth voices in the first place. Um, and I think it's about um, wanting to figure out how to play together and not just be doing parallel play, <laughs> if I could right. say it that way. Right. Um, and so the, what Monica, who's on the line here, um, has been calling detox, um, we... We, for a, a, a couple months, called it detox as well, Monica. And we, we've we kind of shifted to another way that you've talked about things called BU. And, and it's been an interesting shift for my students to think about, yeah, it's the same thing. Sometimes they call it detox, sometimes they call it BU. But, there, but the references to the sort of um, drug and alcohol detox stuff was a little difficult for some teachers to kind of get behind. Um, and so, you know, BU feels like a more positive way to say the kind of, same kind of thing. But at the same time, it felt important to me to not say it was just checking in or um, reflection. It's a practice of kind of understanding what you need to do yourself. Do you want to say a little more, Monica? Could we ask you what's behind detox and what you've been thinking recently and maybe i can hook up and show one but go ahead any thoughts or whatever you're thinking has, monica jump in <laughs> there has been you know several people that haven't liked the term mm -hmm. and um we're actually working on a wikipedia entry of detox um and you, you know, call it whatever you want. I mean, the words mm. that we have, notice, dream, connect, do, they don't even have to be those words. The, the main thing is what you've addressed. It's a self-reflection, and we really feel like it's the only assessment that we need. Um, Dave Cormier just um, did a video on rhizomatic learning, and or Cormier, I guess, and um, in it, he comes to the end and, and says, What's the, what's the best way to get at this rhizomatic learning? Well, it's to stop measuring because we really can't measure learning, you know. So we're thinking that um, a self-assessment is really daily talking to yourself. I've seen so much um, literature just lately, and it's, I'm sure it's been there. I've just noticed it more on talking to yourself and, and you know, having those conversations with yourself. So that's, that's what it is. If, if you're in, in the time in your life where BU feels better, the reason that we're still having detox attached to it is because 
we do feel like it's a, um, it, it's pretty vital and pretty important that we are so enveloped with toxins of um, following directions and not being ourselves and doing what we're told. And so, um, you know, a lot of the youth voices that have created this whole thing uh, feel very strongly about leaving that name there because they do want to startle people because so many people are have become passive with life. You know, so mm -hmm. that's kind of the feel behind it. But call it whatever you want as long as you're daily um, reflecting and assessing yourself. Mm -hmm. Which interestingly gets at the first question like how do we evaluate this stuff um and that's that's it's i i think that's really interesting um should we try to share some of this or any other questions or issues coming up let's let me just let people talk what are you thinking about or what would you like to see or talk about <laughs> jim you haven't said anything yet what do you um think? The issues that I've run into are so much about getting the whole thing set up at my school and dealing with this. Somebody said about getting the computers into the mm -hmm. room and yeah. things like this. And uh, we're, we're using iPads and they're brand new and they're being, you know, it's just, it's been a, uh, a wrestling match to get them into the room. And it seems like just as I've, just as the students are beginning to not, at, you know, uh, ask me what grade I'm giving on them, you know, <coughs> Did you get the you know we, the personal statements and the ten questions and all that, and they started to get into posting them and doing all this and it uh, and you I run into more of the difficulties of getting the getting them into the classroom. So there's those are the issues that I've been facing. The more of just the uh, logistics of how to have them in there often enough. I'm doing this with seniors and using it as a um, uh, self, you know, a lot of reflection and getting it away from just getting a grade to graduate or something like this. And so it, it was started to become more reflective. And then I've, you know, run into more recent difficulties of getting the computers back in the class. So those are the issues that I've been facing. Mm -hmm. Were you able to prevent them from turning off the cameras? No, but I'm working on that. <laughs> I, I, you know, so um, that's large. Tell that story. The larger, the larger problem was having them at all, at, you know. And so I've been fighting that battle, and that, that I, to then get the rest of it turned around is was, became the next thing to do. Or something. So just to, st I'll start the story. But you, if I get it wrong, you'll correct me. But on the seventeenth, a couple Saturdays ago, we all did detox, and I just threw you in front of a. a Cameron said, you know, there are no rules. Let's let's try this out. Um, and you guys did a great job. We're very honest. We're very kind of afraid at first, but you jumped in, I think, in interesting ways. But then I said, oh, well, you're using iPads, so you'll, you'll have the cameras right there. And your school was going to turn the cameras off. Is that right? Me? My yeah, the Jim. The, on the, the, they were very nervous about the students photographing each other for some reason and you know they were nervous about the iPads at all I think people have sacrificed limbs or something to get them into the school or something. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, mm -hmm. so uh, they were they're nervous about it uh, so everybody's kind of getting used to the whole thing but they did turn off the cameras and I have then they took the whole thing out of the class and other people want to use the iPad so I'm now just fighting to get them back into the class so I, I'm, I'll get the cameras turned back on so soon <laughs> enough I, well, we have a reason, at least. Cool. Yes. They're, they're not nervous about the sacrificing of limbs, just the potential no. of having an iPad. Disappear, yeah. absolutely, way more important right. than... Right. Right, absolutely. We know where so, our priorities lie. Has anyone um, had faced challenges from their school about doing detox? I know that it... I haven't really got into it with my students and so because it's not something I'm I'm not yet interested in doing it with my students so I haven't really approached it with my administration yet but I can already kind of guess that they'll be kind of nervous about our students like making videos of themselves and putting them online which is like the extent to which they'll think about this initially so I'm, has anyone else come across any complications with that at all? I have to say that the uh, 
the principal is so behind Youth Voices, she really likes the whole thing. And I um, and I think and they're you know being an art school and all they're very up for using, do, doing the visual stuff and all. I so I, I don't I don't see it as a problem. And I they've she uh, Miss Jones has been incredibly supportive at this point. I I'd like to add that again the whole premise is um, people talking to themselves and saying was my day good or was it bad and what can I do tomorrow? Yeah, right. Does this matter? So, um, you know, the kids that I've been working with the last four years, this is like a manifestation of what goes on in a healthy, self-directed head. What did, yeah. what did you notice today? What did you dream about? Who did you connect with? What did you connect and what did you do? Um, so they don't do the video detox, you know. So even if you decided it was something you wanted to do, the video is just uh, another symptom that you're hearing, but it's not a natural thing at all. Um, yeah. Somebody's got a lot of noise in the background, but that's okay. If you not a mute, it'd be good. Um, so I, I don't want to spend a lot more time talking about detox or what we're calling BU or this process, um, but I do think it's an example of something that I looked at Monica's work and the students there and, and thought, wow, this is important. This is interesting. Um, maybe somebody's calling me. What's happening? <laughs> oh, that's, that's my phone. It will go off oh, in a second. Go okay, ahead. Okay. Anyway, what, the point I was trying to make is that um, one of the things we hope Youth Voices is, and there's a page on Youth Voices <laughs> Called missions. I won't stop <laughs> Okay. Um, anyway, is is the ability to kind of take each other's work and see what it looks like um, translocally, if I could say it that way. Right. So you know, whatever we're messing around with, we're calling them BUs. Um, there, it's going to look different than Monica's <coughs> students did, and if you try it, it's going to look different again but is there enough in common that we can be sharing um more than we are is one of the <coughs> questions i ask and and chris i don't know if you saw but i i i want to pose the question this way like you have this kind of amazing collection of um work that you present to students your your curriculum is there and i keep trying to encourage you to use the missions and I'm not getting through to you. <laughs> <I don't laughs> think. And if I'm not getting through to you, then there needs to be more conversation. Can, so can, can we talk about how we can share curriculum or ideas like it's more? And maybe we can use the example of Chris. Uh, let's start um, this way. That was a challenging way to start, but that's OK. We're friends. Right? <laughs> um, look, but how, do, like, describe the video project that you just started with your advanced photography class, and maybe we can even look at it. Go ahead. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, well, one, to kind of address the first part is, um, hmm. I'm not always sure, like, my mission is your mission, you know, like, I don't want to have mission overload, you know. So like the the thing that Paul's um, talking about, let's see if I can put a little link to it in the uh, chat room is I called it students as teachers and and I called it students as teachers part one um, and I will just drop that in the chat room and the idea behind it is um, I teach some I mean I don't know all kids are amazing if given the chance you know and and uh, so right now I teach uh, an advanced photography class. <laughs> um, hello. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know the, these kids in there, like they teach me stuff every day, and it's really amazing. I've learned so much from them. And um, so I, the other day, it was just one of those days where this this guy Ben, who just does phenomenal photography. 
Um, he was out um, just shooting the mountains. He was up in, uh, he does a lot of work in the canyons. And uh, he had this photo, uh, the, he does time lapse photography, among other things. Uh, he has these just amazing things where he's done star trails and, and like these beautiful canyon shots in Utah. But the other day he also brought, um, he shot video of him kind of just jumping around the hills, you know, and he put music to it. And, and this was something that he just did on his own. And I've been toying with the idea of um, these guys need to turn into teachers in a uh, more shareable way. So, like, I'm benefiting a lot from it, but I think, like, you know, they could do so much for other people who are interested in it, too. So I told them, okay, what you're going to do is um, do a, um, put together some kind of video where it's you uh, talking about your craft and showing some examples of your stuff and then also giving some tips and secrets to other people who might want to shoot similar kinds of stuff. And so this is anything from how to light people with simple lighting in studio or setting up your own studio to, you know, how to shoot good sports photography to um, how to do just stunning portraiture, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, it's I think it's really good. I'm easily impressed, but I really do think they're <laughs> doing some amazing stuff. So, yeah, that's our fourth quarter kind of exit project. It's kind of like an exhibition. And um, what they're going to do is... Um, you know, put something together and share it. So they'll put it on YouTube or in other places too. Uh, we've got a Vimeo channel. And um, the idea being it's time for them to be mentors. It's time for them to be teachers. And so I called it Students as Teachers Part 1 because that was just for my photography class. And, and I thought a more generalizable kind of mission for Youth Voices is what I'm going to put together as Part 2, which is the same idea but for kids in like an English classes you know, how do you become, um, what's your exit? What are you going to do to, um, what kind of exhibition can you do? Um, and I could say more on that, but I might stop there for now. Um, why would it need to be more generalizable? I mean, I, I took your photographer profiles and made it into a mission. Um, yeah. And that, I think that's, so... Like, what are these missions is a good question. Uh, and what I would hope they eventually become is a menu of choices. Um, and, and I hope students start contributing to the menu as well. So that's, that's one of the things I hope it is. Could, could we maybe look at that page? Let's try. Um, and then, so, but ask questions while I'm trying to get this going here. I'm going to look at the page that I put together as if I were Ben from his work. It's ben is his name, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so let me so are you sharing the that. screen? Yeah, I'll try to do that. While he's uh, getting that, Amal and Jim um, and Carla, I'd love to hear some of the things, you know, maybe share some of the things that you're really mm -hmm. loving that you're doing. Like any, any pro like, like Chris just shared. Something that he's really liking that he's doing. Amal, is there something that, on the tip of your tongue there? I thought I saw you start in just a minute ago. Um, I think yeah. for me it's, I mean, this is so new for me that it's not, I don't think I've really discovered everything I can do with it. Um, but for me it's been so amazing to have my kids be so excited about writing and that I'm not, even the students who aren't, doing all their work and, you know, getting all the assignments completed are still so excited when they do. And that's very different from them sitting down to write whatever it is, handing it to me at the end of, at the end of whenever. And it's very, it's been a, I have a lot of lower level students, a lot of my students, um, as I'm sure is, is the case in many schools, but a lot of my students read and write very far below grade level and they work really hard before they even put a comment up on the site and they, it, that goes through multiple drafts and it's been so rewarding for them to have that you know even when they write a comment and someone says thank you for your comment and they write back to them and then it gets kind of that conversation going it's like validation of of their writing has been way more than I could ever give them in just the immediate confines of my classroom and so it's been so cool to have that to have that going on and to have them 
writing about whatever they want, which has been way more entertaining for me as a, as a grader because they, you know, I have one person interested in like healthy relationships and another student at the same time doing the same assignment about, you know, poltergeists or something. So it's like complete, like whatever is on your mind lately. And that's been, it's just, I've gotten to know them so much better. They've been so much more expressive. Um, they've gotten to know each other a lot better. It's been a very positive, you know, nobody like, says mean things about what someone else wrote on Youth Voices ever, and I had, didn't have to tell them not to do that. That's just been, you know, that's just been a very understood, like, you don't, no matter what somebody writes, you either don't comment on it or, you know, it's just been a very amazing experience for me, and, and for them, more importantly. Yeah, um, and I'm, well, I'm okay. not going to share anything. Hello? Let's keep talking. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Carla. Carla, um, I, like I said before, I'm just getting my students started on Youth Voices. Right now they're just um, uploading their bios and their um, passion questions, but they haven't really started um, their, their real writing on Youth Voices yet, but I am looking forward to them doing so. One of the projects that I'm going to have them work on this uh, trimester is doing an eye search paper. And so I definitely want them to blog about um, their research question and just write about the process, like what kind of information that they're looking for and um, what the results are. Jump in, folks. What's your, your thoughts, your feelings? What are you doing that's cool? <laughs> <laughs> Jim, go ahead. Okay, um, I'm cool. I don't. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Whatever language you uh, want to use. Go okay. Uh, no, I'm. Just, um, I was. I. Uh, I, youth voices wise, it, I'm sort of hamstrung because of the equipment stuff. But what I started to do with the personal statements, uh, the, they the students got somewhat excited about the personal statements and got more serious about. It. And uh, I just gave them the format that you had shown me. You know, shown us at the. Saturday workshop thing, and uh, they got into this idea of writing about themselves. And from that, I um, began to read. Many, none of them have ever read Speak, so we were we. I was using Speak as a model of a memoir. In, I know it's fiction, but I used it as a I used it as a model of a, a format of a memoir. And they began to really. Inst um, I keep. I had been giving them assignments about you know what's going to happen in the future or other things like this and suddenly they I asked them to write about uh, a moment in the past in high school and they that has taken off in some way where they really like looking back at what happened to them in their high school career and that was really cool and I don't know how I was going to ask you you know how I could possibly use it on youth voices in some way without making you know um, they, and they gotten excited about this idea of writing these uh, fairly serious memoirs about what they went through at a, some particular moment in high school. I, 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 I first narrowed it down from you could pick any grade or any moment you know in a grade and they began to write these and I you know for the first time they began to like really relax and write I thought this, this group of very recalcitrant seniors but and that was that was very cool an enormous relief I might add also but that um, and they they started to take, I, you know, they listed the important people or even unimportant people and, uh, you know, what they, you know, giving them little nicknames like, like in speak or not. And I, I let, I just made suggestions and they took off and it has taken off and that's been very cool recently. That's a pretty huge statement that you said they learned to relax. I'm learn sorry? A statement that you said they learned to relax and write. They just started to. It's been, you know, um, they started to relax with the, the personal statements. They started to get. In, they stopped asking me, you know, what am I going to get on this, and, and they, uh, they started to relax. And on this recent thing, they've relaxed even more, and it, it um, and the inter, the very frustrating thing of the interruption with the equipment and all of this, when it just starts to take off, where I'm no longer the. Uh, you know, they're not all looking, I'm not the magnet or whatever, and it starts to be where they're doing their own stuff. That is enormously satisfying uh, when it happens. And Youth Voices seems like it's a, a wonderful conduit for that. Uh, 
uh, for the idea of getting it off of me, of the teacher, obviously, which I've done with journals from, you know, writing project journaling and things like this. But the Youth Voices uh, takes on a very strong taking it off of me, you know, which is great, uh, you know, an enormous relief. Mm. And pleasure, I might add. Mm. Other thoughts? I don't know. As far as assessing it or any of this, I you know, I I don't even begin to understand how to assess it. You know, I I just um, when it starts to take off, it just it has its own reward for them, and they know when they're working hard and when they're not. I uh, of, um, and that that's been also enormously interesting, and satisfying too. Yeah, I, I just I just want to leave it open for other people to say what they're thinking about. I, I will answer, Jim. I will answer the, the question you said, how would this fit in? And, you know, they should just publish discussion posts. And I'm wondering if you can just ask them to do it from home, uh, some of it. If they have something that's really wonderful, maybe they could find their own way to get to a computer, you know, as well. Um, um, I have asked, I have done that to some degree. Mm -hmm. Asked them, you know, to start sending me the stuff from home. You know, uh, when we were doing it through initially, when I was getting it set up, and they had started to do some of that, and I'm going to do more of it. The 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 problem, the interrupting part of it is that I, you know, it it's never it hasn't gotten settled with the school, and I'm trying to. You know, I feel like I'm trying to constantly find ways around the whole thing and all of this. Uh, Look, but the home idea is great. That I was starting down that road also. One of the fun things about the spring is that we try things out, and then we know what we want to make solid for the fall. The fall, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, relax and keep playing with it. We can we can see what happens. But. I think I think you've hit some really important themes. I just want to say them again and then see if anybody else has any other examples or questions about it. Um, one is taking the focus off the teacher, trying to get to individual inquiries and 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 but then it's also about sharing and realizing we're a group and we can form subgroups and and finding each other and connecting. So if your students put those memoirs up, my students would see them and say, or not everybody, but like three of my students would say, oh, I want to write a I memoir too. One. Right. So that's that's what I think Youth Voices is about, those kinds of things. And then, of course, yeah. within that, having authentic conversations about the work. So go ahead. Who wants to my concern was, uh, th my only concern was, because uh, this is so new, feels so new, is the idea of what they're going to start to write about in these memoirs, which they've just begun, and then, you know, how how personal and putting things up like this. And it, this all feels so new in terms of this the idea of publishing. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, important and, you know, uh, and very authentic. But, you know, uh, new territory certainly for what I'm asking from them, in, in a sense, ex mm -hmm. in terms of exposure and things like this. Mm -hmm. I would say I'm probably a little more guarded, um, or my students are, or whatever, because um, you know they they get a lot of memoir kind of writing uh, out of their system, I think, or you know maybe they just do a lot of it when they're tweeting or you know tumbling or facebooking, um, you know, because they they really do that a lot, and um, and so the end of the year with my seniors, because um, I'm pretty sure Jim, you teach seniors too. I do. Yeah, um, I kind of the last one of the last projects they'll do is I call a graduation gift, and uh, what they do and, and memoir is part of it, but the stuff that they publish online, um, a lot of it is isn't the memoir part of the gift that they put together. So, in short, they put together a gift for someone significant, and it's a text-based um, gift that shows you know all that they are to someone who's significant. So a lot of times it's for the parents or uh, you know a sibling or a significant other kind of thing 
And, you know, so memoir is part of a, a physical gift that they give to someone. But the online stuff that we tend to do at the end of the year is kind of like, um, again, it goes back to exhibition kind of stuff. And, um, ex you know, like, what have you learned in high school is a real common thing that I'll toss out to them. And so that they own some piece of the curriculum, like, you know, I'm deep into music, and so I'm going to talk about the one, four, five progression. Or, you know, like, I really love calculus, the beauty of integration or whatever. So they talk about those things, um, and it's not as much um, memoir. I, I guess that's a reflection of the kind of teacher I am or something, but um, that's how I approach the end of the year with seniors. Mm -hmm. So not to harp on it, but I will. So I, we need to get that up on in the missions. <laughs> And 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 okay. I think all right. And here's, the here's, deal with the missions, though. Yeah, t explain what the question is. Right, well, I think if, if if I put everything up as a mission, it seems like I might the missions page might get unwieldy. Yeah, it is my... already. Who cares? <laughs> you, no, I'm serious. You can you can link to different missions. You can say go find this one. It's not hard. I think and and we can we can work with with that. You know, I mean, yeah, we need to think about making the page more accessible. Maybe we need different pages for different kinds of missions and that kind of thing. Right. But I think mm -hmm. we need lots of examples. Like, I'd love to hear the, or just see a, a few paragraphs about Jim's project where he's using Speak and getting those kids to write memoir. Because maybe that'll work for one of my kids. But then this gift idea that you're having will work for somebody else and i'd i'd love to kind of bounce those around and you know kid will come up with their own version of it <laughs> too mm -hmm. but yeah but i think we need to see them and have access to them and chris most of your stuff is public already it's just you know we have to know where to find it <laughs> yeah so i just have to overcome yeah. the reticence of you know like in, I guess I, I sometimes Being think about, messy. like, do I want to impose my deal, you know, and I know everyone, <laughs> you can choose to just not do it, but, you know, I just didn't want to litter the site, you know. Litter. <laughs> impose. <laughs> Get messy. Well, too I much think... noise or, you know. I'm not too worried about that. Okay. <laughs> I will I will put up a mission that I was actually thinking of. So here's... The reason... The... Okay, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was just going to say the other thing that's that's interesting about the missions is that once that's and and they're not assignments necessarily, but they're descriptions of what of possibilities. Um, but you can think about they could start as assignments. We can think about that. But once they get up, then they get attached to the students' work. So there's some context that's available as well um, for for the work that goes up. So I think that's kind of interesting too. Anyway, I'll stop harping on that. Um, I, and, and just say that the reason I've been mentioning it over and over is I think that's one of the unique and wonderful things about Youth Voices for us is that we can work together in collaborative ways um, on the site. I mean, we do already. I just want to see if we can take it to another level. So. We should be finishing, so why don't we go around and hear what you've thought about while we've been having these conversations. Like, what's your final thoughts? Carla, can we start with you? Sure. Um, final thoughts. Um, I'm thinking about just, like, doing away with trying to do a rubric and maybe just mm -hmm. as an experiment, just let the students do the the, the writing do the uh, work on youth voice just for the sake of doing it, just for the experience of expressing themselves in a public forum. And I'll just see how that goes. Sounds good to me. I'm all. Um, I, I will actually look forward to some added missions, if for no other reason, just to kind of be inspired by what other people are doing. And if I can't use them, then fine, you know, but it, it would be really cool to kind of see those. Well, I, I gotta say, I... The other example that I will bring up is that Carla and you are both working on some sort of research project. 
And it'd be great yeah. if you were sharing your plans and she was sharing her eye search plans and you kind of were yeah. thinking about the, that possibility. So that's one forum to do that. Absolutely. Chris, okay. Sounds good. Do you have any final thoughts? Yes. <laughs> Chris, did I scare you away? I was oh, going to ask. Sorry. <laughs> I was <laughs> chatting in the room. Uh, Final thoughts. Um, well, you know what I'd really like to know is how to connect. Like all the teachers that I see right now on my screen, I'd like to know. You know, if you've got some students in Youth Voices, I, I know I can find Green Dot because I've seen them um, all students, and you know, like you have a school page. Yeah. But I guess I would like to, you know, help if anybody needs it. You know, having a stu a school page so that I could find like gym students when you guys start. Um, I would really like to be able to connect to them because I think they would like that as well and it makes our uh, my students experience a lot richer and then Valerie if you get your students up there I guess I would just like to know like how to find um, everybody here on Youth Voices. So the school page is what we have now. It would be great if we had something better but that's what we, we can start doing. So thank you for offering to help with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Fred, any thoughts you have here as we're kind of ending? Well, <clears throat> you know, I'm I'm uh, with students only in a very bizarre way these days because what I'm mostly doing is substitute teaching. So I, I'm working almost full time, but it, with totally different kids every day mm -hmm. and following orders. But I always try to work in some string games around the edges and I'm really on the verge of reinventing myself as a, as a string game evangelist. And I really think I can book everything to string games. It's, cool. it's just been so exciting and I put a couple, I, I feel like I, being with so many different kids reminds me of what I think is the main reason teachers accept such miserable pay you get so much energy from being with kids. It's just nice. a wonderful experience. I, I love it. So Fred, so, so I, I learned a new game. Uh, you, you know, a red light, green light game? Uh -huh. One of my students, we, were we didn't even get to play it, we were just talking about it, and she said, I had a teacher who added a purple light, that means you spin around. And that made me think of adding a yellow light, which means you go really slow and mellow. And I made up a little rhyme, like trying to seed the playground with some uh, stuff like string games seeds the playground. It's, I just love seeing that. Every school I go to, I'm always leaving strings with kids to take home and my instruction to them is ask your parents and your grandparents if they know any string games. Ah, neat. Get nice connections. People yeah. playing with each other. <laughs> Fred, you have an assignment. Can you put a string game up in, in missions? Absolutely. Email me, we'll talk. Oh, I, that's, a great, uh, that's a great way to structure it. So, so I'll, I'll start my curriculum there. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And then we can all play. Yeah. Cool. Um, Valerie, you have any final thoughts? We should be ending here. Um, just, I don't know. I, I fell in, again, I fell in love with Youth Voices a couple of years ago. I think the first thing I saw was your rubric, where mm. you had the literary elements, the research, and I just love the fact that. Um, you had given the kids different missions and that their assignment was to each week do a little something something a little current event some literature work some whatever um, I know that Youth Voices is a venue that I really do hope to utilize even more so next year I'd love Chris for us really to connect the schools and the teachers okay. and the kids because I do think that that is an important piece um, because I do know that when my kids got responses back to their poetry last year, they were absolutely ecstatic. Um, and it's just those types of connections between the teachers and the kids that are really, really important. So, so um, Paul, I love your missions. 
or assignments or topics or, you know, yeah. whatever we want to call it. And I, and I think that we can add and add to them. Cool. All right. Um, Micah or anybody else, anybody want to say anything else? I don't want to cut you off, but we're getting late here. Are we good? Good. <laughs> Great. So thank you all. Um, let's uh, let's end and by saying that we've been broadcasting over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network. And thank you all. Um, we'll see you next week. You're welcome back any Wednesday. <laughs> and we'll talk to you. Good night. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks, Paul. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Thank Good you. Night.